Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. We are talking all about Premier League predictions today as the new season draws ever closer. It's only a matter of a few days away from kicking off once again. I'm going to go through my prediction for the new season. We're going to go through the table from bottom to top and we're going to talk about all the teams that I think will finish in those 20 league positions. Bit of a disclaimer. I may do another video on this, editing my predictions a little bit. I can't imagine that they will change too much. But just in case that something big happens or some things big happen within the remaining few days and weeks of the transfer window, things I imagine may change. So I may do another video on that, just, just a bit of a heads up that my predictions may change. But for now, these are my predictions ahead of the new season. I'm going to see how, of course, all plays out from there but before we go any further i would like to remind you to please like the video and also subscribe for new both ones always and for would be greatly appreciated but for now let's get in to my premier league predictions beginning with the bottom of the table slash relegation battle okay so sitting rock right bottom of the table by the end of the season i predict is going to be watford Going off of previous Premier League seasons by the Hornets, I personally predict that they'll go through about six different new managers get, uh, by the end of the year. No, but in all seriousness, being a newly promoted side often means you're one of the favourites to go down, of course. And given Watford's history, it's easy to see why you'd probably be backing them to go back down to the Championship in a bit of a yo-yo sort of fashion. Can the likes of Troy Deeney and Ismail Assar really save Watford's season? Or are they doomed before they even start? My personal opinion is that they're doomed and they'll be heading back down to the Championship. Sorry, Watford fans. Sitting in 19th and obviously in the relegation places, I think will be Norwich City. A couple of years ago, Norwich returned to the top flight division with a fearless and stubborn attitude. They were going to play out from the back, they were going to play attacking football, and it didn't matter who you were, that wasn't going to change for anybody. It ultimately was a major reason for their downfall and for their relegation that season, but the Canaries have instantly bounced back to try their luck again at staying in England's top tier division. Will they have learnt from their mistakes of a couple of years ago and managed to survive? Or will the lack of trans major transfer investment and the lack of star quality see them go straight back down to the Championship? Personally, I think it'll be an entertaining watch this season, but I see it being the latter. Norwich will be going back down again. Sorry Norwich fans, but that's just the way I see it. In 18th and in that final relegation place, I know this one may shock a lot of people. I know this one may be something that a lot of you don't agree with. But I'm going to have to go with Southampton to go down. I don't, I'm not entirely confident on this one. But I genuinely think that a big shock could happen in the relegation race this season. And Southampton will be a part of it. And I think that there'll be a dark horse for relegation this, this season. I like their manager. I think they've got an okay squad. I think it could do with some improvements in some key areas. And that's ultimately why I've picked them to go down because I don't think they may have a strong enough squad. Particularly when you look at their transfer window activity, they haven't really done much in, an, in terms of bringing in new players, but they have lost one major player and that is, of course, in the form of Danny Ings, the star striker who has scored a large amount of goals for them over the past couple of years and really helped keep Southampton in the Premier League and into mid-table finishers, comfortable mid-table finishers, I may add. His departure now leaves question marks over who will get the goals for Southampton this season, who will step up this season with the terms of goal output. If Southampton can't replace his goal output, then the Saints will obviously be in big trouble, I think. And I think they'll clearly struggle for this forthcoming campaign. Does Shea Adams and Shane Long both have the ability to step up this season? Only time will tell. They do have a few weeks left in the transfer window. So if they don't feel like they can, they still have time to go out and find a new striker. But this is a bit of a gamble from them. And it's why I honestly believe that they could be going down this season. 
Lying in 17th, I believe, will be actually be Brentford. I know that they may be a lot of people's choices to go down, but I think out of the three newly promoted sides, Brentford could be ones that will probably stay up and may shock some people. I always love a good underdog story, and Brentford are exactly that this season. Decent manager, decent workhorse squad that is built on statistical analysis. A very unique way of looking at transferring players and building up a squad in general, I believe. But with the fans behind them, I think Brentford could certainly upset and surprise a lot of people this season. Also, look out for Ivan Tony. He was, of course, the replacement for Ollie Watkins last season. He went on to have a record-breaking season in the Championship last campaign, scoring 31 league goals in the Championship and setting a new record there. So you can imagine that a lot of the goal scoring responsibility will fall heavily upon his shoulders and fingers crossed for him, fingers crossed for his teammates and fingers crossed for the whole of Brentford that he can hit the ground running in the Premier League. In 16th, I believe Crystal Palace will fill that spot. Interesting times lie ahead for Palace and I really cannot predict how it will go. Patrick Vieira's arrival this summer to take place as manager ahead of obviously Roy Hodgson who of course left after the last campaign has brought a very fresh start feel to this club right now there's a very fresh start feel a new era at Selhurst Park has begun but it's an era I'm completely unsure about and don't really know how it will go I believe it will either go really good and it will be sort of like a very big improvement for Palace or it could be really bad and it could be over before it's even really begun. It could be another season in which Palace slip under the radar at certain points throughout this campaign. Um, but I do think they have enough to keep their heads above water. And I think that is mainly because they'll have three worse teams than them as the campaign progresses. But Palace to keep their heads above water here. 15th, I see Newcastle filling that spot. It's been a very inactive summer of transfer activity for the Magpies at St. James's Park. That could be about to change uh, because at the time of recording, it looks like Joe Willock is set to sign for the Magpies for £25 million. Despite only being on loan for the second half of last season, Willock's goals were a major contributing factor to Magpies' survival last season. This year looks set to be another season of battling relegation for this side. But from the little bits and pieces that I've heard of pre-season as well, the preparations for the new campaign don't seem to be going down all that well with the fans, the supporters, the Newcastle faithful. Newcastle will again be relying on other teams being worse than them, but for their part, they'll also be relying heavily on the big responsibility of players on the shoulders of the guys like Callum Wilson and Alan St. Maximan. Both will be heavily responsible for providing excitement, creativity and most importantly goals ahead of the new campaign. 14th, I've gone with Burnley. Sean Dyche continues to keep Burnley afloat despite what is mainly considered by Premier League standards as a bit of a shoestring budget. He will of course have that task yet again for this upcoming season. Burnley will once again be ones battling to survive relegation but given their physical approach to the way of playing, the fact that fans are allowed back in stadiums and with possibly having other teams that are worse than them this season, I see it being another campaign in which the Clarets survive in. In 13th place, I see Brighton there. Last season, Brighton had a pretty solid defence, all things considered, in which they had the seventh best defensive record in the Premier League. But ultimately, it was a lack of goals at the other end of the pitch that let them down. This summer, the loss of Ben White will be a bit of a big blow to them. Rumours are they are looking for a replacement in the form of Liverpool's Nat Phillips. He's been heavily linked with a move to the Amex Stadium this summer, but we'll wait and see on that. But if they can sort out their goal-scoring issues at the other end of the pitch to go along with their nice football, then I believe that the Seagulls will stay up, they'll have a solid and safe season ahead. In 12th, I've predicted Wolves. A new era begins at Wolverhampton Wanderers. Nuno Espirito Santo left the club at the end of last season, of course. And this season, Bruno Large takes charge. Hey, that rhymed.
I mean, I hope I pronounce his name right to make it rhyme, but uh, we move on. A bit of an unknown addition to the Premier League is Bruno Large, but Wolves will obviously be hoping that he adapts to the Premier League very quickly and takes to it and hits the ground running. As for the squad, there's a new goalkeeper in Jose Sarr, replacing Rui Patricio. Raul Jimenez is back from his nasty head injury. Fingers crossed that he will be okay going forward and that he will get back to his best. But otherwise, it's pretty much as you were from last season for Wolves. There are still rumours flying around that Wolves could possibly look to bring in a few players as well as lose a couple of big name players from their squad before the window shuts. But we'll have to wait and see on that score. But I think that they've got enough about them for a comfortable mid-table finish. In 11th, I believe, will be Everton. Of course, as we know, a former Liverpool manager is taking charge at the Toffees for this season. And to say that the Toffees fans aren't exactly happy with that decision would be an understatement. I talked about Rafa Benitez taking over as Everton manager in a video I did when, of course, that news broke and that news happened. So if you want more news and more of my thoughts on that particular story, go back and find that video. Uh, but it could be a pretty ugly season at Goodison Park if obviously things do not begin well and things continue to snowball in that respect. I believe that Everton do have a decent enough squad. They have, may not have strengthened it a lot this summer. It may have been a few mediocre acquisitions at best that have come through the door at Goodison Park. But I think they have a squad that is very capable to achieve at the very least my predicted mid-table finish for them but it could be a very up and down yo-yo-y type of season for the Toffees. In 10th I think West Ham will fall that spot last year West Ham pretty much shocked everybody by doing as well as what they did by achieving a sixth place finish this season with the added shed Europa League schedule and no real major acquisitions to their squad as of right now at the time of recording obviously I think that this squad may get left a little bit behind by the rest. I think that if they can recreate some of the football that they displayed and some of the form that they displayed last season, it will be a still a decent enough season for West Ham, just not obviously as impressive as their last campaign. In ninth, I see it being another ninth place finish for Leeds United. I don't think this side will suffer from second season syndrome and I actually think that it will be another solid season for Marcelo Bielsa's side due to one aspect that they didn't have last season supporters. Ellen Road will be as will be loud as fans obviously return to stadiums for this upcoming season and it will be a driving force and a welcome addition to have for Leeds and something that I think will add and complement their attacking football and cause them to ruffle more feathers this season and finish in a decent standing. So a ninth place finish for Leeds is my opinion. In eighth, Tottenham. And I had a bit of a debate about this one. I thought that Leeds could possibly finish above them. I did kind of debate this, but I think that if rumours are to be believed about Latoro Martinez and so on and so forth, Spurs may be able to just about edge over Leeds here and get that eighth spot. But having said that, it could be a very long and difficult season for Spurs. It's looking increasingly likely that Harry Kane is going to be definitely leaving the club despite Spurs doing everything in their power to try and make him stay for another season. That's where the majority of the goals and assists lie, of course. So it's up to someone else to step up in his place. New manager this season in Nuno Espirito Santo, former Wolves manager, of course. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how well he does there, how he takes the squad and how he goes about his business with Spurs, that sort of thing. The good news comes in the form of Hyungmin Sun, who signed a new contract over the summer. But of course, he's going to be losing his very good friend and very close teammate in Harry Kane, if that obviously comes to fruition. But like I say, it's all about replacing Kane this season. It might be a season where for Spurs fans, you may have to just grit your teeth and hope for the best kind of thing. But on the upside, on the upside, looking on the positive side of life, they're probably big favourites for the Europa Conference League. That's something, right? Could be some silverware at the end of this season. Who knows? In seventh place, I've gone with Aston Villa, Manchester City and Manchester United aside. 
I think Villa have had one of the best transfer windows this summer, laying down some real signals of intent and ambition ahead of the new season. Losing Starman Jack Grealish was obviously a big blow and would hurt anybody, but bringing in Emi Buendia, Danny Ings, and my personal favourite, Leon Bailey, who I'm most excited for seeing in the Premier League next season as far as other teams' uh, players goes, uh, has, I think, softened the blow a little bit. And of course, Villa don't seem to be slowing down anytime soon in this transfer window with a number of rumours and reports about different names flying around. Of course, I, as I've said all along, their transfer business reflects their attempt to be trying to break into playing Euro European football for future seasons. But can they achieve it this season? Concentration-wise and defensively, I still think there are some question marks over this squad. But Villa could certainly be an entertaining watch for the coming campaign. In six, and I know this may shock some people again, but I've actually gone with Arsenal. I genuinely do believe that Arsenal will be back in the top six this summer. And I think that if they obviously acquire a creative and goal-scoring midfielder, with the rumours being either a James Madison or a Martin Odegaard, then I think that that can be achieved. But I also think that a blessing in disguise came for Arsenal last season to help them for this season. And that is the form of no European football of any kind. I believe that will be the blessing in disguise that Arsenal need this season to have a successful domestic campaign in which they get back in at least the top six. A free summer will hopefully see Talisman, Pierre-Emerick, Aubameyang feeling refreshed ahead of the new campaign. While Alexander Lacazette has a big season ahead of him as well. They've endured a big transfer window arsenal, which possibly hasn't ended yet. Like I say, with more names being uh, mentioned and rumoured to be linked with a move to the Emirates this season. But I certainly see a decent cup run and a top six finish for the Gunners this season if they can acquire a goal scoring and creative midfielder. In fifth, I see it being another fifth place finish for Leicester. Another season, another fifth place f uh, finish. Leicester always look on the verge of breaking into that top four, but just don't hold their nerve for long enough. And that is why they've managed to fall out for the past couple of seasons. They may not be in the top four for as long as they have been in the past couple of seasons for this current campaign, for them two seasons combined, but the result will be the same. They'll just miss out on that top four finish, but they'll keep the top four race alive until the final day, in my opinion. In fourth, I've gone with Manchester United. There's no hiding place for Solskjaer anymore. I didn't think there was last season when he lost the Europa League, but definitely after this summer, there is no more hiding places for Solskjaer anymore. Manchester United and he need to win something this season. They've had a very busy tr summer of transfer activity, and now they need to win a trophy. No excuses. No exceptions. It could be any piece of silverware. Obviously, the league and the Champions League are what the fans want the most. But failure to acquire them in FA Cup and a League Cup wouldn't go amiss as well as a top four finish. They need to be in the title race for as long as possible. They need to be in the title race right down to the wire and get, uh, and get to that final day still within a chance of winning the title. They need to get to the latter stages of the, of the Champions League at the very least. But like I say, their main goal is to win a trophy. There is no more excuses for Solskjaer this season. I still don't believe that Solskjaer is good enough for this side to win one of the major trophies. But a top four finish and a domestic cup are very likely and very possible. In third, I've gone with Liverpool. I think the returns of both Virgil van Dijk and Joe Gomez will act like new signings from last season. I think Ibrahim Akanate, Liverpool's newest acquisition, strengthens their defence and I think that he'll be a welcome addition to the squad. I think the summer rest for both Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane in particular will have done them both the world of good. Salah hopefully will be still as consistent as ever. Sadio Mane dipped a little in form last season and hopefully the rest will give him a feel of refreshness and resurrect his form ahead of the new season. Unfortunately, 
I believe that other teams around them have strengthened so much to a point that I think that the Reds have, may seem like they have stagnated a little bit. And that is why they could be left a little bit behind this season. But I still think the Reds are good enough for a top four finish. Maybe a good run in the Champions League as well. As for the other domestic competitions, we'll see how seriously they take them. But they definitely have enough for a top four finish. In second place, we have Chelsea. I think the signing of Romelu Lukaku, whenever that gets made official, obviously bolsters and strengthens their attacking options and their strike force. Coming off of a high of winning the Champions League as well, Chelsea and their fans will certainly be buzzing and fancying their chances at giving Manchester City a run for their money this season. I think defensively, Thomas Tuchel's got it working for the most part with this Chelsea side. I think they've got obviously new acquisitions to come. Uh, rumours and reports flying around that Chelsea still aren't done in this transfer window. They're still looking to boost their squad in certain areas. And I personally think that the likes of Kai Havertz and Timo Werner will have a much improved season this season and should not be slept on, particularly if you're a fantasy football manager and you're looking for some players in that kind of area. I think that in particular Havertz will be one to watch for this season. But that's just me, and again, my prediction that Chelsea will finish runners-up this season. Two, of course, as you've worked out by now, Manchester City. I'll say this, I think Manchester City will win the Premier League this season. I think they will finish top of the league. But I think it may rely on whether or not they gain Harry Kane or not. I think they've got, a, they've got, obviously they've got a very strong starting 11. They've also got a very strong second starting 11, a second team. But if they sign Harry Kane, that will of course reinforce their squad further. It will improve their strike force, making it even more scary for teams to face. They then certainly have the capability of winning everything this season they have the capability of winning the premier league the league cup for like the fifth time in a row and the, another fa cup to add to their collection and maybe this this season will be the year that they finally get their hands on that all elusive champions league trophy however if they miss out on kane if they don't sign kane by the end of this transfer window they could miss out on a lot Last season, they got away with playing false number nines and getting away with playing Gabriel Jesus. I don't believe Gabriel Jesus is good enough, and I don't believe that playing false number nines throughout this entire campaign will work as well as what it did for them last season. So, I think City will win, but I think a lot will rely on whether they sign Harry Kane or not. But of course, as they always say, these are just my thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, on the Premier League for this upcoming season. I looked at your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions on the Premier League itself as well. Who do you think will finish in the relegation zone? Who do you think will make it into Europe? Who do you think will finish in the top four? And who do you think will, will finish as Premier League champions ahead of this, this forthcoming campaign? I honestly think this will be an, uh, an even more exciting and unpredictable season than last. I think with the new acquisitions that are coming to the Premier League, this is set to be an absolute madness of a season. I'd love to know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, down below in the comment section. I'm sure it'll all make for interesting reading. Otherwise, hit that like button on the way out if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new or want to see more content. Like Both things will always and forever be greatly appreciated, of course. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video. And I will see you all again soon in another video.